Hi, and welcome to The Glory Generation. I'm Pastor Dawn Brown at Skyway Church in Goodyear, Arizona. And as you can see, my husband is not next to me right now when he typically would be while we're doing The Glory Generation shows. But I have three amazing ladies I'd like to introduce you to. I've got Cindy Herege. I think I said that right. Pretty yes, close anyway. Pretty close. Cindy is a wife and a, and a mother, a business partner with her husband, and does a lot of ministry with marriages. And I've got J.C. Langston, our 19-year-old panel member today. Thank you, J.C., for, for joining us. As JC does some modeling and she's a student going to college right now and she's a single woman so we've got to figure something out for you on that one JC. <laughs> And I have Melissa Luck. Thank you for joining me, Melissa. She's also a wife and a mother and her business partner with her husband and ministry partner with her husband and, you know, just an amazing woman of God. And I just wanted to thank you guys for, for joining me today. You thank guys you. are just, thank you. you're impressive ladies just on your own and just as a group. I think this is going to be a, a powerful time. So here we go. Hey, today we're going to talk about marriage. We're going to talk about, you know, before you get married, what you should expect and just you know, marriage in general and how women, you know, are seeing things in, in life right now. And Cindy, I just want to go with you right now because you do, you know, with marriage ministry right. and everything. There's, there's a lot of things going on in this world right now. And there's a yes. lot, of, lot of women that are having a hard time in their marriages. And it, it's just, you know, you have such deep insight. So let's just start with marriages that are just having a little bit of problem and how we can take a marriage that's having problem and take it to a glory generation marriage. Well, first, you know, one of the things is when we talk to other couples and even through our classes that we have and some of our counseling, we talk to different couples who are battling, you know, the lack of communication or maybe the relationship with God that is fully, um, you know, that they're still trying to find that balance with God and family and, you know, with their relationship. But one of the amazing things is that... Um, my husband and I, uh, when we started, you know, dating, we weren't um, Christian. We didn't know the Lord like we know now. And so even for us, it was, it was hard to start our relationship. Even during the time, the first three years of our marriage was very difficult. And so when we see these couples having a difficult time, we can relate and we understand yeah. because it's hard to live right now in this, in this you know, society right now with so many things going around us that um, it doesn't allow us to um, be able to find maybe like um, a balance with marriage and just with everything around because there's so much going on. And so one of the things that we advise and we talk about with other couples is um, we tell them that the walk with God and how to be able to communicate with each other and always have God in the middle of the marriage is so important and is always, you know, a foundation to begin your marriage. Yeah, I was, somebody asked me just a couple days ago, you know, she said, Pastor Dawn, whenever you feel a void in your marriage, what do you do? You know, I had to stop and think for a bit because, you know, I'm one of those very fortunate women. I have an amazing husband, and, you know, one of the things that he likes to do is he likes to do things that make me happy. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes him happy when I'm happy because, you know, the whole happy wife, mm -hmm. happy yeah. life thing. Well, <laughs> it really true. does work that way, but, you know, we also have to make them happy. So mm -hmm. when she asked me, what do I do when there's a void in my, in my marriage, I thought what I end up having to do is look in. Mm -hmm. because I know the man that I'm married to and That's I know right. that he's a godly man and I know that he wants me to be happy and I know that you know he's not doing anything evil or awful to to hurt me mm -hmm. or you That's know anything right. so whenever I'm feeling disappointed or whatever in my marriage I stop and go Okay, Dawn, so what's going on inside of you right now? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things that we need to teach the women is that, you know, he can't make you happy. Right. You know, he might be able to put you in a bad mood or a good mood for this moment right now, but there's nothing in him that can make you happy. Ralph mm -hmm. can't make Cindy exactly. happy. Exactly. You know, so what, what we as women, you know, what I tell women that they need to do is just, why don't you just look inside a little bit and see mm -hmm. what's going on in here. You know, where are you with God right now? That's and is, exactly it, is it really right. something with your husband or is there something going on with you? And then some of the things that right now that you're saying that um, when, when, you, when we walk in or when I, at least when I walked in into my first counseling session and when I have um, couples come in as well, they'll say, well, he's the problem. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. <laughs> you know, I'm okay. I, I'm fine. And, and sometimes we think, well, he's the one that needs to change, you know. And so we don't realize, and it's true, you know, how you're saying, um, you know, we need, to, we need to analyze and think what is that we need to change about ourselves to help them 
you know, be able to 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 begin to change th what, whatever they they need to um, change in in their ways or their ways with us as as a couple. And um, I think that's one of the beauty about um, once you begin to walk in the same um, accord with God, you learn to. Um, outdo each other. Try to love each other as much as you can. Yeah, you know, you good. you don't want to hurt e e one another. You know, you want to make them as happy. I know that's one of the things we have. Our marriage is like that now. Is is my husband always tries to do the best thing he can to make me happy, and I Aww. do the same for that's him. That's so sweet. So. I like that. <laughs> so. so you guys were not Christians when you got married. No. no. So there were some little issues with that. Yes. Now you and Brent, you guys were Christians when you got married, yes. but I mean, so. Your past life was your past life, but you came into marriage and you were already Christians. How did that work for you? Um, well, at first, before I was saved, it would have been really hard being able to deal with the emotions uh, because I would have been like, oh, it's all his fault. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's not one thing wrong with what I just did. Yeah. And so I really appreciate the fact that I grew first before I entered into a marriage. Um, because it really helped me. Um, one thing that I remember which really helps me all the time is when, if we don't agree with something, then I go back and I go, Lord, just help me. If, if, if I am wrong here, show me, like, let me see. Let me see what's happened. Lord, but if, if this is not the way and it, it deals with something that he's dealt with, then Lord, just speak to him. You know, so either way, I've taken both situations, if it's me or him, just like you said, and, um, and asked the Lord to show either way. Right. So I stay open because sometimes, sometimes we all do want to be like, it is so his fault. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go with so it. True. But then even for me with marriage, um, coming as a single mom, because, uh, you know, our son came into the relationship, um, that can be different too, because if you, you didn't start, you know, you, you didn't start without children, then you go into children. Um, it became a different thing. But for us, um, it really, I really would encourage anyone to be able to um, understand where they're at mm -hmm. um, in their walk with the Lord, particularly before you, before you end up married. Um, my husband would tell you he got married um, right after he got saved. And he said, you know, wonderful woman, but the problem was I was not ready. And, and that's, that's really important, you know, particularly with your walk. Are you ready? Um, it's so important. So you were talking to me earlier about marriages between people who are unequally yoked. Yes. And they've actually been given counsel that maybe they should get a divorce because, hey, you're not, he's not a Christian and you mm -hmm. are and you don't belong together. You know, speak into that a little bit. Well, a lot of times... People talk about, you know, when you talk about unequally yoked, obviously when we're out there on the dating scene, we're looking for somebody because, you know, we do know we want to be with somebody. God's designed us that way to have a husband. But are we looking in the right place for that? You know, that is very important. So if we should be equally yoked, we both love the Lord. But if the person does not know the Lord, then we should stop right there and not even look for that person to be someone that we would know we would marry. For us, it was, it, we totally knew where we were. Um, and it doesn't even matter if somebody's, um, you know, one person can be further in their walk with the Lord than them. Just as long as you're both in that same walk right. with the Lord is very important. That's the major thing. But for us, um, particularly even with, um, with what we dealt with in our past, obviously we knew even with virginity, I wasn't a virgin because I had my son, you know. But for us, we, we were never together before we got married. And, and God can bring purity back to you. A lot of women, you know, just they take the next thing, even after they're saved, um, because you, you don't realize that you're pure again. You know, he changes everything. Jesus changes everything for you. Um, even if you came from um, a situation with another marriage, you know, he doesn't see that anyways. So now you can, you can be in the new place that he's called you to be in. Um, everything's changed, but you always have to be ready to grow. You have to be ready to grow. Um, and for instance, I've had friends who before they got saved, you know, they were already married. Um, now she's saved. Now he's not. But now they are unequally yoked because 
she's saved and he's not. But they were married first, and that's a major difference. They were married first. Mm -hmm. But Scripture tells us that we can be the example and, and bring our mate to the Lord, right? Um, which Scripture is that? I don't remember. I, I don't have that <laughs> written in front of but, me here. <laughs> uh, the Scripture says that. So mm -hmm. therefore, I use that as an example because I've had people come to me, you know, I was told, you and Brent have such a great marriage, and, you know, so they'll come to me for advice, and, but I was told that I should just leave him. And I'm like, no. where is that in the scripture that you should leave him? You know, the scripture says that you can bring him to the Lord. Um, and, and you've seen the difference. So I, and my friends who were um, not saved first while they were married, and she gets saved, I mean, it was years before he even came to church with her. You know, they used to get high before. I mean, just everything you could imagine this marriage, even um, violence in their marriage. Um, she stopped. He just wanted to carry on. But she, she stood by the word that said that I can, he will be saved because of my example. He will know the Lord. She didn't give up on him. Um, and I don't agree with anyone to tell somebody to give up on that marriage. There can be extreme circumstances, obviously. But if you know, and they're not extreme circumstances, then, you know, I really wouldn't suggest somebody give that advice. And then, now this man is so on fire for the Lord. I mean, he's counseling husbands how to be a better husband mm -hmm. to his wife. See, that's and, good. And that's, that's really, the prime yeah. example. So, Cindy, I'm, I know you've dealt with relationships in your, when you're doing ministry, you right. know, with the unequally yoked. So what do you tell them? Well, one of the things we tell them and we advise them is uh, obviously we see the love among them and we see, we tell them the number one thing is they're both there for the session. So we know that they're both committed to try to make the yeah. marriage work. And so from there, we just take it. We just pour in God's glory, God's love, and just continue to encourage them. And we've seen through, um, you know, through the past few, you know, years um, that we've been doing ministry, we've seen marriages from, you know, one not being saved and the other being saved, you know, and she just continued to pray for her husband and pray for her husband and declare those blessings. And God just came through and there's that man on fire. I mean, he did it with my husband, you know, I, when we started, I felt like I was the one pulling everybody, you know, and so now I see him, this man of God, just, you know, pouring into these men and encouraging him. It's just so amazing to see how, how we can, you know, God, you know, can really transform your life. And that's what we try to do is encourage them and, and just give them hope that, that, that their marriage can be completely restored with God's love and God's glory. And that is glory. You yeah. know, that's part of the glory generation. You know, we, we look at glory and we say, oh, isn't glory amazing? Like the angels flew through the room right. and everybody was slain in the spirit. And we did mm -hmm. all these wonderful things. And these people were healed and, you know, the cancer is gone. And that, that's glory. That's amazing glory. Right. And we love to see that. But glory mm -hmm. is in the little things, too. Exactly. It's in the relationship that was healed. That's it's in right. the body that was healed. That's it's in the right. family that was healed. That's the glory that this generation needs to walk in. And J.C., as so I was talking to you earlier, before we got on, on air, you know, you were talking about the, the young men of this generation don't really have an mm -hmm. example of how to be, you know, a glory husband, right. a glory boyfriend, you know, those kind of things. Kind of tell me what your, what your thoughts are. Well, my personal experience with guys is, you know, if they are a Christian, they have been raised in a Christian home, then as soon as they, you know, became an adult, which, you know, basically is 18 years old, they went out and did whatever they wanted to, but then they regret it. So then they've made the decision to stay pure until they're married, but they've already, you know, they've already not been pure in the past. So you have that aspect of it. And then you have guys that have just gone crazy and, you know, they're not pure. They don't really have any um, idea of, you know, a pure woman. And then when you come into their life and you are pure, how do they handle that? And most of the time they handle it by, you know, they want to change you. They want to be the person to, and I hate to say it this way, but they want to conquer that part of you. And that shouldn't be that way. But there is really no, you know, out in the world example for a, young adult male to follow as to how to treat a woman, how to, you know, respect her values, respect how she's been raised, and respect her decision to stay that way. What do you think about that? 
I think that you're right. It's very difficult to just, you know, especially right now in this dating, um, the society right now, how it is, you know, there's so many different uh, social media. There's so many different things that come up about, you know, dating and, and not being pure yeah. and just doing. And the more you do, uh, like the more exposure of sex, you know, sexual um, encounters or things like right. that, it's it, that a lot of women now are feeling like that's how to attract a man. And it's just not, that's not it. Right. And so I, I, one thing I would say, JC, is, um, you know, as an advice to you that is searching for that man of God is God has a plan and God knows the man that's going to be for you. Mm -hmm. And he's going to line them up in your path. And the day you see him, it's, it's so amazing because the day you meet him, it's like you knew him. That's how it was with my husband. When I met him, I felt like I knew him all my life. Mm -hmm. And so, but um, one thing that I can advise you strongly is always remain pure. Always remain pure because you will, uh, he will respect that even though he might not respect it. But if you guys end up getting right. married and let's say he's not, you know, he's, he's still battling his walk with God he will appreciate even after marriage the fact that you remained pure and the fact that you remain your morals you stand you stood on on god's word and mm -hmm. you believed and 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 he will appreciate that mm -hmm. and and just continue searching for that for that man of god and the hard part is i know that sometimes it comes with a broken heart right yeah because you do attach yourself to them mm -hmm. and then they expect things that you're not going to give them exactly so i i know you've dealt with that yeah. mm -hmm. and it just you know it's like at the beginning, they think that they'll be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, months and months go on and then they realize that they really aren't. So that's where my fear of a guy being unfaithful to me in a relationship where I've chosen to stay pure, but, you know, he hasn't already. And he's made the decision to, you know, stay pure with me. But then comes the time where he's he like, tired. you know, he's tired of that. He you know, wants to change that aspect of my life. And it's like, no, that's the most important part of me. That's the most special part of me. And there will never be another person who can say that they have that part of me, except the, there's not a do over of that. And that's how I feel. You know, it's like you can get it over and done with. Yes, but it's not special. It's not, you know, you don't have that connection with that person forever. Whether you're still in a relationship with them or not, you still are tied to that person. Your mom and dad have done a great job of raising you. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah. What do you, you want to speak into this a little bit, Melissa? Well, you know, a, a lot of times, um, even even for me, even with um, other wives, I'll have friends around me, and they're like, "I just let your husband be around mine because I, I I'm so blessed too. Um, my husband is just like how your husband is in um, the way he treats me. I mean, if you know him, he's always calling me princess, but." Um, and we came into our marriage totally pure as right. well. But there's always an example for God because, you know, you said um, they don't have any example, you know, they really don't have an example, but they do. And so if you know that that person is somebody that, that you're attracted to and, and you follow those guidelines because they know Jesus, you know, and, right. and you've gone over the equally yoked thing, then you can always have them around Pastor Greg, right. you know, you could have him around my husband, somebody, and, and there's, you know, uh, younger 20 year olds, 30 year olds that are also married, you know, or the same way they understand that they're not going to have sex yet and you can find them, but then you can also be part of that example right. by putting him around that. Oh, meet my friend, Jack. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, he is so, oh, we'll have great. Let's all go bowling together tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think you taking a step a lot of times because the problem is we can have other friends around us too that say they have certain views mm -hmm. um, but then we found out our friends you know they bend and so we've got to learn to be able to even even walk with our friends and help if everyone can help each other keep from bending I think that it really it, it can really change mm -hmm. so there's hope in it that's true and God sees your heart God mm -hmm. will know God will know mm -hmm. your, your your needs your wants of your desires of your heart and he'll grant them to you. Well, 
and I know that I'm not the only one, yeah. but it is a very, very slim margin right. of girls. And, you know, even being a model, I'm around girls all the time my age, and I hear them talk about, you know, different guys. And some of the girls that I'm around, you know, they've slept with almost 100 guys. And it's wow. like... It's that's like awfully young. That's where yeah, they yeah. find their value, though. Right. That's their, yeah. you know, they put their worth into how many guys that they can, you know, get with. Because if they are with so many guys, then they feel more attractive or more pretty. Right. And it's like, that shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So, JC, what do you do in a situation like that? Mm -hmm. How can you bring them to a little bit closer <clears throat> to the glory generation? For me, you know, they they know how I am. I'm very outward with my feelings about that type of thing. And so they ask me, they're like, well, you don't, you know, like you don't miss it. Well, I've never had it, so how can I miss it? You know, it's like it's not an addiction for me. And I've had so many people tell me that once you have it, you're addicted. And I don't feel like that is the truth. I feel like that they're doing it, you know, out of trying to prove something to somebody or, you know, whatever. So it's like you have to tell them that you're worth more than, you know, this right. Joe Schmo that you're, you know, sleeping with that doesn't love you, that doesn't care about you, and is probably sleeping with two other, three other women at the same time. So why don't you do me a favor right now? I want you to look into the camera and talk to those young ladies right mm -hmm. now and tell them what they need to know from the Lord, the how, much, how they're loved from Him. Don't find your worth in a man. Find your worth in who you were created to be from when you were in your mama's womb, when you were created to be put on this earth. You have a purpose. Your purpose is not to be this, you know, girl that sleeps around town that has to say, oh, I've slept with this guy, this guy, this guy. That's not your worth. You don't find your value in how many guys that you can be with, how much you know, attention you can get from these guys. Dressing like a, you know, something I don't even want to say, but, you know, having different body parts show, feeling like that you have to expose your entire self to the world for somebody to see you, that should not be your identity. And the reason for that is because it really is painful. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they think they're having fun, but it's really not fun. Right. Right. When you look back, when you sit home alone at night, and there, there's that pain inside of you, that emptiness that you thought you were feeling is not being mm. filled with that. That's it's right. not being filled. Melissa, I want you to speak into that a little bit because you talked mm -hmm. about they weren't pure, you weren't pure, mm -hmm. and then you went into your relationship mm -hmm. with your husband in purity. Mm -hmm. Talk about how if they've already blown it, mm -hmm. they've already done, mm -hmm. slept with a hundred guys, what can they do now? Well, first I say that um, for me, I'll tell you an example for me when I was um, 15, the first guy that I thought I loved, and I was with him for four years, but so, so therefore I was railed in thinking that I was in love, you know, and, and that was a different thing than, you know, getting out of satisfaction of different guys, but you can be railed in that way too. But knowing where I came from and I first met my husband, we both knew that we weren't going across that barrier. Um, mm -hmm. To us, our relationship with God was way more important than crossing that barrier. But I also knew my significance was in Jesus, that he has made me pure, no matter where I came from, mm -hmm. what has happened. Right. So even those girls mm -hmm. that you just talked to, and they know, oh man, I've already messed up, you know, even one guy, it doesn't matter. You can change it because you know what? Jesus changed you. You've That's become right. pure, and he says it's okay but let's start from right now. Amen. And the man who loves you will take you for where you're at and he will not compromise with you. There you go. That's it right there. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Did you want to add well, something? And the thing is, you know, guys nowadays, they'll say I love you within a month or whatever. Lust is not love. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So we need to measure love against right. the, the love of Christ and how how he makes you feel and how it's mm -hmm. not just that, that, that verbal, yeah, show, but show me, right. show me that you love me. Can you take us out with prayer? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for all these women, all these examples of women, Father, that are here today. Father God, I just pray for every woman that's out there, Father God. 
battling, Father God, trying to, to find love, trying to, trying to find that person, that right person that, that they need to feel love for, Father. We just pray right now, Lord, that, that you begin, Father God, to, to just move around, around even social media, around the world, yes. around everything, yes. Father God, that, that they may go back to the principles of what it's like, Father, to be more like you, Lord, and to seek, to seek men, Father God, like you, Father God. I, I, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Father, that, that you just even, even allow women to begin to pray for their, for their husbands been even before marriage, Lord, so you can begin to prepare them, Father God, to find that right person. I just declare and decree right now in Jesus' name, Father God, that we just want healthy marriages, Father God, healthy marriages and, and healthy relationships, Father God, so this, this world can be a better world and a better example, Father God, for our generation. We declare that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. This Thank was you. good stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, I'm Pastor Walter, and I'm the worship pastor here at Skyway. And my greatest desire in leading worship is the, not to just bring you a moment that is satisfying and a moment that is great, but out of those moments that we walk away with and encounter with God that we can take with us wherever we go. It's more than just uh, singing the right song at the right time, but walking out that presence that we experience in every moment of our lives. The Word says that we are receiving the Kingdom, and to me all that's within the Kingdom are the sounds, the words, the presence, the fellowship of God, and it is our job and our mandate as worshipers to express that here in the earthly realm, that the sounds of heaven be released here in the earth. If what I've said today has interest you and you desire to use your gifts and abilities to join in this vision of bringing heaven's sound into earth, come and see us.